It is my distinct honor to introduce today's commencement speaker, Dr. Monica Mo Anderson. Dr. Anderson is an alumni of the 1988 DDS class. Her dental experience includes private practice ownership, directing a federally qualified health center, and Texas Medicaid and Healthcare Partnership, over 30 years of public speaking and writing on healthcare related topics, and many other distinctions, including TEDx speaker, multiple published authors, and award winning podcast hosts. But there has, there has been a consistent theme throughout it all. Dr. Anderson has used her broad knowledge of the oral healthcare industry to advance education of healthcare professionals, provide policy input, and to serve patients. She uses her diverse experiences to share powerful life lessons, and I know she will impart wisdom for us all today. As I welcome Dr. Anderson, I know that she has come full circle today. She spoke at her own commencement in 1988 as class president. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Anderson. Good morning. Graduates, can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah? Yes, I am excited with you and for you. Thank you for that introduction and uh, thank you, Dean Mays, for inviting me to speak today. I haven't shared this with anyone, but I was so surprised when I got that email from his office that I Googled the Dean's uh, email address. <laughs> because I thought it was one of my classmates pranking me. They do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, this is a huge, huge honor, professionally, both as a dentist and as a speaker. It's right up there with giving my TEDx talk last year. However, we have so many successful, accomplished, distinguished alumni that I never dreamed I would get tapped and get this opportunity to stand before you, and I am very, very grateful. I also applaud the educators, staff, and family members who are here in mass today who have supported your educational pursuits. We are all happy for you, my new colleagues. You've successfully, successfully overcome every difficult assignment from the national board exams to administering vaccines during the pandemic. Kudos to you. You did that. And as I thought about how this day might go, I began having flashbacks of my own graduation, standing here on this stage, speaking as president of my class. It feels like it was yesterday instead of four score and seven years ago. <laughs> I remember my very bored two-year-old son, Tony, in the back of the auditorium fighting with my parents, wanting to run up here and join mommy. Yes, I had a child in dental school. I remember thinking about the turn up to come later at a local dive bar. It's closed now, but it was called Stand Up Franks. You know Stand Up Franks, Dr. Olin, Dr. Sell. <laughs> it's kind of like your Sally's. Imagine Sally's just really dingy and with no food. <laughs> and no one left there standing up. And I recall the thrill of accepting my degree from then Dean Dr. Richard Elze. I replayed every step of my career path, seeing where each new opportunity brought valuable lessons. And today I'll share briefly three of those lessons learned that I pray will, for you, diminish career stress, reduce the likelihood of career burnout, which is a very real thing, and enhance your overall well-being. The first recommendation is, is both easy and hard, both easy and hard. Before this month ends, take a block of me time, a couple of hours, and compose a personal mission statement. That's a short two to three sentence motto defining your core values. Beneath that statement, make six Make bullet points that detail your life goals in these six dimensions of wellness. Intellectual, emotional, spiritual, social, physical, and occupational. Keep this list somewhere you can always access it, in the cloud, I mean for life. That 
is the easy part. Here's the hard part. Going forward, and this is going to happen, when someone is pressuring you to do something you are not qualified to do, or something unethical, or something illegal, pause, two, three, four, walk away, and reread your mission statement. Then make the choice that is true to the main character in the story of your life. Over the years, some goals will change, but your core values, that you're kind, that you're loyal, that you're consistent, that you respect others, those should not change. I have seen too many healthcare providers lose their licenses, lose their livelihood, lose their families because they prioritize making an extra dollar over making a difference. We have many inalienable rights, but the right to do wrong is not one of them. Always try, try, we're not perfect. I've made mistakes, we'll make mistakes, but try to do the right thing by thinking about your patient, your career, and your family's future. I promise you this, you will never regret making a decision based on those factors. My second recommendation, graduates, is stay humble. Didn't Kendrick Lamar say that? Stay humble <laughs> and listen. Jostling with the feeling of satisfaction you'll get from helping others may be feelings of mental, emotional, and physical fatigue compounded by a mountain of debt without a plan, without knowing your values, without knowing where you want your life to go. It is easy to make bad choices that could haunt you forever. I'll share one example of how these characteristics, humility and listening to others, helped me early in my career. After graduation, I worked part-time at Boynton Health Clinic. I think it's still open here on campus. They have a dental clinic in there. And a student came in for an emergency visit. He had a severe periapical abscess and clearly needed intraoral incision and drainage. I had only per performed two or, the, two or three of these procedures in school, but you know, I thought I could do it. So <laughs> I, without being too technical, I know everybody here is not a dentist. After opening up the space, I realized, uh-oh, I need to place a surgical drain due to the amount of infection. I tried and tried to place the Penrose tubing, but the sutures kept pulling out. I got so frustrated. The patient's sweating. I'm sweating like a pig. And on a side note, it's been brought to my attention that pigs do not sweat. <laughs> <laughs> but if they did, <laughs> their scrubs would have been soaked like mine were. were. And my assistant, I loved her. She, I was gonna say she was my grandmother's age, but I'm gonna say she's the age I, I am now. <laughs> she, she had decades of experience, and she saw me low-key panicking. So she kicked me under the chair. That's how your assistant will communicate with you. <laughs> Which was her cue for us to go into the hall and have a master class. On a sheet of paper, she discreetly coached me up by explaining the optimum place to put the sutures. And she also recommended a different suture material that I had never even heard of, but the other docs used it. I listened. I took corrective action, and my patient benefited. But understand, she helped me because I had previously demonstrated a willingness to listen to others and value their experience. Humility sometimes requires putting the patient's best interest ahead of our pride. Make no mistake, we cannot, we must not abdicate our responsibility as the treating provider. However, please hear this, harnessing the collective wisdom of your team, the other associates in the practice, people more experienced, less experienced, will save you from costly mistakes and lead to better outcomes. None of us knows everything. My final word of advice is to always, always maintain multiple streams of happiness. Diversify your streams 
of happiness. Pursue things you are curious about, things you enjoy, things you are passionate about beyond dentistry. Don't limit your growth to professional development, competing with other dentists, who's got the biggest office, the largest staff, the latest equipment. Activities such as exercise, travel, community service, date night, date night family, right? <laughs> and family time, visit your mother, should be firm appointments on your calendar. On your calendar, not dreams that disappear when the alarm clock goes off. Research has proven we can offset the stressors of our rewarding but demanding profession. Providers who maintain a work-life balance, have a supportive community, are much, much less likely to commit errors. They have a higher quality of care, and they are generally more satisfied with their personal relationships. Graduates, it is not true that you are what you eat or what you own. Rather, you are what you do. You can blindly follow others or make new paths where highways never ran. You can sit around whining, complaining, judging what's wrong, or take action and correct those wrongs. You can bully people with your new letters and titles and authority into doing it your way, the only way. Or you can include everyone get engagement, get buy-in, take advantage of their experience, and do it the best way. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. And knowing what I do now, especially after last night, about everything that it took for you to be in this room, in those cap and gowns, sitting here today, I sincerely believe you will not only make the right choices, I believe you'll make history. Thank you, and congratulations.